Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Geico 15-Minute Moto Show. I'm your host, Ralph Shaheen. You know, we love talking about the passions for riding motorcycles here on our show, but some of our guests actually have multiple passions, and that's what we find here today with our guest, Paul Taylor. How are you doing today, Paul? What's up, Ralph? Thanks for having me. Well, for those that might not know, you are a, a well-known rock star playing in many bands, but probably most well-known for your time playing with Winger. Yeah, yeah, that, that seems to be the one. I'm always Paul from Winger, despite <laughs> the fact that it's actually been quite a few different bands, but that's but, all right. But, but being yeah. Paul from Winger has allowed you to be Paul the motorcyclist as well, right? That's given you the opportunity to chase that passion. Oh, uh, love it. I love riding. I, I, you know, it's funny because I... I wanted a Harley for the longest time, but I lived in LA right at the 405 and the 101. And I just, I was always like, man, I really want to have one, but that's just not, the, there's no safe way to get out of there, you know? And I just thought, you know, someday if you move somewhere safe, you can have one. And so the minute I moved uh, to Nashville in 03, uh, I got one, so. And, and now what do you ride? What do you have in the garage? Uh, well, it's, it's a, it is actually a fat boy, but it's been completely converted. It looks more like a heritage soft tail, but I, it's got, it's all fully lowered and has beach bars and Vance and Hines and the screaming Eagle carburetor. I, it looks like an old sixties vintage bike actually. Um, I, you know, but of course when I first got it, you know, you spend the first years just noodling with it and putting all this stuff on it. And, uh, later lately I haven't done as much, but, uh, I just really enjoy getting out to ride it. I think that's one of the great things about motorcycles, and you and I have talked about this in the past, especially with Harleys. You could park 10 of them side by side and no two look alike because everybody has a different vision for what they see that steel and chrome canvas to be. I own a fat boy as well, uh, and mine doesn't have beach bars or look probably anything like yours. So yeah. what was the inspiration for your bike? Well, I, you know, I think I told you, like, I, my within my first week, I, I drove up somewhere. There's a little uh, bar and grill, and I went for some lunch, and I pulled up, and there was this heritage soft tail sitting there that little did I know that this guy had sunk thousands and thousands. It was, it was actually a show bike, but he had it fully all lowered down in the, the lower bars, and it just it looked lean and low and mean, and I was like, why does my bike not look like that? And I was getting off the bike and he came out and I started talking to him and he started telling me all the stuff he had done to it. So instantly I was like, why did I buy this? I, I want that, you know, but uh, so slowly over time, I, and also, as I told you, the, the uh, solid wheels, uh, I just couldn't get used to them. You know, one wind gust and it blows you, you know, into the next yeah. lane. So uh, yeah, I put the, you know, I put some white walls on it and the, the, the spoke wheels and, you know, it's fun. It's fun, man. I, you know, it's a it, never ending thing. You can just keep doing stuff to them. So it's not done then in your mind, it'll continue to evolve. You know, I'm going to, it goes in spurts. And honestly, for the last couple of years, because I've been pretty busy in the summers and I'm a wimp when it comes to riding, you know, when it gets to those colder temperatures out here and, you know, I, I don't, I just let it sit in the garage, you know? So unfortunately all my good riding days are getting taken up touring, but um, you know, uh, this last month I've actually gotten out a bit and been riding, We, you know, here in Nashville, we've got a thing called the Natchez Trace and it goes all the way from Nashville down to Tupelo, Mississippi. And there's nothing but just this beautiful, well manicured winding road. And it's just the most awesome ride. So I, I did that one time, went down to Tupelo, stayed, then went across to Memphis and stayed at the Peabody, you know, with the ducks and yeah. then back. So that was a nice ride. And it's funny, I was thinking this week because I just played up in Pigeon Ford. I just did that Monsters on the Mountain with, yeah. you know, three days of 80s rock bands. And of course, that's getting pretty close to that to the Tale of the Dragon, which I've never made it to. Uh, so uh, I was thinking, man, I should have brought my bike up, and but the weather was going to be iffy. So, well, I'll tell you what. I'm about halfway to the tail, as are you. So I've done it before. I'll get my fat boy, you get yours, and we'll meet at the tail. You're on. You're on. <laughs> it is definitely an interesting ride. So you've had the opportunity traveling the world, uh, being a rock star, to see so many different places. Is there any place you've always wanted to ride that you saw on tour that you went, someday I need to come back here and just ride this? Well, I, you know, I, I've dragged it, this one all over the place. I mean, I... You know, I took it one, one time when I, uh, my mom was ill for a while. So I 
trailered it up and I was going out to stay with them for a while. So I took it out to the wine country, you know, uh, Sonoma, Napa yeah. Valley. And I rode there for a couple months. And on the way back, I hit different, you know, my buddy in Vegas, I rode there and I've taken it numerous times down to Florida for some of the, you know, big bike events down there. And I, I, w I in my mind, I have this fantasy of riding in Europe. Um, huh. I mean, some of the countryside in Europe, like Switzerland and all that, I just, in my head, it seems like, wow, that would be amazing, providing, you know, I could ride on the correct side of the road. You know, if it's <laughs> one of those cities where you're riding on the wrong way, yeah. I think I'd be probably passing on that because I, you know, don't want to forget which lane I'm in on a bike. So, Is riding something that's inspirational for you musically? Yeah, I, I, it's amazing to just clear my brain, you know, because when we're on the road, it's people and a lot of stuff happening real quick. And, you know, and then it's back to the studio and, you know, editing and editing and, you know, and sometimes when you spend hours a day just editing and recording, you know, it's just so great. And I, you know, when I first got it, of course, I was like, man, I need to find some people to ride with. And of course you go out and you, you know, hook up with some of these different groups and there's always a couple of knuckleheads. And pretty soon I just got where I was like, I'm going to be the lone rider. So I, that's what I do. I just get on it. And I, from here, I can get out into the, the backwoods really quick. And uh, it's just great. I, I've got some beautiful roads that I ride on and just clear my brain, you know? So you're a lone wolf. Pretty much these <laughs> days. I mean, if I, you know, I like in the wine country, I've got a good buddy that rides. So, and, and that's always a lot of fun, you know, but I just haven't, you know, my only few friends that had bikes out here moved away. So yeah, these days, you know, and it's usually spontaneous too. It's usually like, oh my God, I've got a, an hour or I've got, you know, half a day. I can get out of here. And so I just jump on it and go, you know? Yeah, it's very important to find people that ride the same mind frame as you, right? Because it, otherwise it's not enjoyable. If, if you want to ride at one pace level and they don't, you spend all day stressed out and that's no good. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't particularly like riding with a guy that takes off out of a stop sign and pops a wheelie through the intersection on a road King, that kind of stuff. I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah. So yeah, I hope you don't do that. Though. No, no, I don't. And, and I, I totally like I did one time yeah. and I was like, man, I, you know, I yeah, said, I'd like to be doing that on. No, I, I think for a lot of us, a motorcycle is supposed to be a place to get away from stress not add to it. Right, right. So takes takes all that out of it. H have you ever written songs while you're writing in your mind? Maybe something oh, yeah. of the, the vibration oh, yeah. gets a rhythm going? Or Always when I, you know, in the car and on the bike. I mean, when I'm driving, that's when a lot of stuff comes to me, you know, because the world is kind of going by as fast as my brain is working, you know. So yeah, that's a great place to write lyrics. Is it something about the, the vibration or the rhythm of the engine note that gets you going that way or is it just the fact that I, I you're think clear it's thought? just that you're, you're you've got constant new information coming you know it's like tree you know street you know air you know whatever it's just you're there's as opposed to sitting in a static room looking at a wall going i'm stuck on this lyric and you're just nothing's changing and you're just so when there's constant new information coming at you it really helps just to kind of unlock everything you know you don't just get stuck like going oh my god i can't think of the lyric you know yeah is there a type of motorcycle you think you'd you'd maybe you want to try that you never have like a dirt bike well, it's funny or... me, me and one of my i was out on tour for like the last six years up until a year or so ago with tom Kiefer from cinderella yeah. and cinderella and i was talking to our old road manager the other day and we had done a show where ducati showed up with a semi full of ducatis and there was this giant parking lot at this venue and they're like hey guys want to try these and I, I you know both me and him just could not believe how fast those things took off um, you know, I, for me, it was super fun to do it in a parking lot and to have, you know, but for me, riding is just, I love just having the big bike and just cruising out in the country. That's, you know, that's what I love. Some guys love the speed and just all that. I, you know, I'm just. As a music fan, um, cause you and I have ch chatted about this a little bit too, like the Rolling Stones, for example, we both love the Stones and yeah. or the Who, somebody like that. Um, it's easy to get immersed not just in the, the current band, but their history and just dive into everything about a band like that. There's so much to learn and to discover, uh, not just musically, but 
stories and books to read and, you know, old documentaries to watch and so forth and so on. I know for me, there's certain brands in motorcycling. Harley is certainly one. Indian is another. Ducati, without a doubt, is one where the history of the brand is almost as interesting as riding the bike. And I enjoy going into that and, and reading about how those companies got started and survived. Is that something that intrigues you as well? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't study it, but I mean, I, you know, a few years back I, in Milwaukee, I went, you know, to the Harley thing up there and just, uh, I, you know, I, I've been kind of fascinated by Harley's, like starting with the electric glide back. I remember I was in San Francisco with my parents uh, and we were outside and I'll never forget we were walking and also we came to this one street and there was a lot of police, you know, securing the event, whatever it was. And it was just these lines of Harley electric glides. And I just, that was it with the big t fat tires. And I just was like, what are those? And, you know, it just, from that moment, it hooked me, you know? Uh, yeah. Sometimes you don't even know why, just some, this thought or feeling you had when you were a kid going, man, those are cool. And so I guess that's why I probably kind of modeled my bike kind of towards what I saw back then, you know? It, it, which brings up an interesting thought. Is there an era maybe of Harleys uh, and music that go together that's not the current one, but then maybe you go, gosh, you know, if I could go back in time, this era because of what was happening musically and what was happening with bike style or design really fits you? Well, Normally, somebody would have an instant answer for that. I'm a little ADD, and I, I like a lot of different things. You know, I'm kind of a chameleon in a lot of ways. Like, you know, when I write, and actually, it's benefited me. I, I thought it was going to hurt me at one point in my life. But musically, like, aside from doing the touring and band thing, I also write a lot of stuff for television, a lot of songs for television. And it got where I was writing everything from serious R&B and, and really heavy pop stuff, like all the programmed, you know, Ariana Grande type stuff. I'm really good at programming all that kind of stuff. It's not my favorite music, but I did it a lot of it for TV, um, as well as, of course, the rocks thing, which, you know, of course, I, I love rock. So, um, yeah, there, I just, you know, I always find things I like in all the different time periods and, and the bikes and you know, I can't pinpoint one specific time. So it's not necessarily the 70s with a big long fork chopper and a high sissy bar and I some was, Zeppelin that I was never really the big chopper guy, <laughs> you know. Uh, my cousin Paul uh, had one. Uh, he had a Harley that was, you know, had real long forks and all that. And But that was never my thing. As I'm also, I'm not really super into the big, you know, the, the real the high hangers, eight bars yeah. either. Um, I always think, man, I've never ridden one, but people say they're actually more comfortable than they look. So yeah, I gotta I'd be honest, I've never done it either. I do like the beach bars like you've got, but I've never I've never done those. Uh, okay, yeah. so let's talk a little bit about what is happening with you musically that's taking you away from your riding. What's going on with Winger and what else do you have happening? Well, Winger's actively been writing a new record over uh, the last kind of year, year and a half, you know, everybody's, you know, Rebs and Whitesnake and John's out with a starship and Kip's writing symphonies. And so it's been real hard. And I was actually working on two records, which as I told you, I haven't gotten the okay to kind of, you know, talk about yet, but we, uh, so we've all been kind of just putting it together as fast as we could on our time off. And, uh, but recently it's, we're really going at it. We just, we just had Rod, our drummer in town for five days and he cut all the drum tracks. And I just spent uh, a couple of days with Kip two weeks ago and we got all the remaining keyboards done and Reb flew to town last week and did his final solos. So we're getting close. Um, I, I'm, you know, this is, we're almost at the point where Kip will kind of just take over and just kind of redo any vocals he wants to do and uh, just put all the final finishing touches. He's great in the studio. So um, I think he's going to just kind of take over with it at this point. So classic winger, you know, uh, it's, uh, it borders on kind of winger meets Kip winger solo record. It's, it's, it's a pretty eclectic, it's, uh, to me, it's, that's what it sounds like. It's great stuff, and, you know, definitely some heavy stuff on it, and um, it's very musical, you know. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff, and it's you know, it's kind of like a lot to take in, you know. So got it. I, I, so if anybody cool. wants to find out what's going on with Winger or when you guys are going on tour, when the new record comes out, where do they go? 
Well, we, we're not sure yet um, how we're going to schedule stuff because we haven't gotten everybody's schedules. You know, that's usually when we're able to pull something together. Well, how about like a website? Is there a website they can keep checking on? Well, you? yeah, you know, the winger.com okay. website and, and, you know, the, all the, you know, Polestar and all the, you know, if you just type in winger tour dates for 2022 and because uh, right now we don't have a lot scheduled because we're just kind of in the process of figuring out everyone's time schedule, but uh, dates should start popping up. You know, though we do have one show scheduled, I think, um, down in uh, West or uh, uh, West Palm, or yeah. So okay. it's going to be like um, four days of a million bands, um, and Got so it. yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay, so we always wrap up when we're fortunate enough to have a musician on the show. We always like to ask, what is or has it been written the the best motorcycle riding song? And you can't go with Steppenwolf because that's too easy. And it has to have a good, motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, a good motorcycle song. Is there one out there that you can think of, or maybe it hasn't been written yet? God, you know, maybe I, maybe I need to just get on it. Um, yeah, I don't have a particular one that I blast when I'm out there riding. It's usually right. actually no music for me when I'm riding. Well, sometimes so I, that's the best way to go. Just let that V twin do it for you, you right? Know, when you record all day long every day, and you know, it's it's uh kind of you gotta have a little bit of time to yourself to, you know. Well, thanks, man. Out. We really appreciate you being on the show. And we'll hey, man. we'll thanks, stay Ralph. tuned to Winger Dr. Dom. Look forward to getting together and riding someday. Yeah, Tail of the Dragon. We're on a couple of guys on some fat boys headed up the mountains. Thanks for joining us here on another Geico 15-Minute Moto Show. I'm Ralph Shaheen. We'll have another one for you every week right here on Speed Sport.